I'm Layla and welcome to Life with Layla and the third instalment of this weaning series, Sorting Out Solids. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, paediatrician or a nutritionist. I'm just a mum who has been through weaning twice with my daughter Scarlett and Ruby and I'm about to go through it again with my six month old son, Jacob. In today's video I will be talking to you about how to prepare solid foods for your little one and also how they progress as they're learning to eat solid foods and how you can adapt the sort of foods that you give them to match with that. If you are watching this video first I would certainly recommend you head over to episode one of this weaning series where I present the basics of weaning, how to know when your baby's ready, some do's and don'ts and some safety aspects such as choking and allergies. So if you want to watch that video you'll find the link in the description box below. Babies will all develop their feeding skills at their own pace and don't be put off by some of the faces that they might pull. Uh, they could look pretty disgusted by some of the things that you put in their mouth, but what you have to remember is that they've never eaten food before, so it's all very new. And what might surprise you is a food that they really don't like one day, they might absolutely love the next. So keep presenting foods to them and you might be surprised they might suddenly change their mind and like that food. Most importantly, remember that feeding solids should be fun in order to encourage a positive relationship and association with food as your baby grows up. So you'll remember from episode one of the weaning mini series, I showed you some equipment that's useful to have for weaning. There is one piece of equipment that is really good just to have for solid foods, and that is the crinkle cutter. So this handy little knife is great to chop up your food and make it a crinkle shape so that they can hold on to it easily and it doesn't slip through their fingers. I would highly recommend it. It literally cost about, well this one cost about, I don't know, four pounds from Amazon. Wasn't expensive at all, so definitely worth investing in. Another piece of equipment that you might think is quite essential for your baby to start eating solid foods is teeth. Well, actually, you might be surprised with how effective your baby can be at processing solid foods without teeth. They've got very hard gums, so what's really important is that you just prepare foods in the right way that allow them to safely eat without teeth. And then when the teeth come along, well, it's a bonus, but they can also start to eat more uh, tough foods like meat. So here's a range of foods that are commonly chosen as first solid foods for babies. Uh, there's loads more, the list is definitely not exhaustive, but this is just a selection that I started with um, to get you going. Avocado is a great first food and high in good fats. A nice ripe avocado is soft and smooth, cut into wedges and you can use the skin to give your baby a rough handle to stop it slipping through their fingers. Pop the leftovers in a tub, add lemon juice to stop it going brown too fast and store in the fridge. Avocado on nicely brown toast is a common baby favourite. Wholemeal toast is the healthier choice. Banana comes with a built-in handle for babies just starting weaning. Cut in half and remove a section of the peel. Leave the stem as a handle, but the other end can still be used because the peel helps provide some grip. Older babies can try slices and eventually the whole fruit. Cucumber can be cut into finger length spears or wedges with the skin on for grip. A nice cold cucumber is soothing on teething gums. Broccoli or tender stem broccoli has a longer stem to hold on to, can be steamed for 10 minutes and served warm. You can often buy prepared watermelon, melon, mango and pineapple already cut into fingers. So a question that I had when I started weaning was, how do I know that I've cooked the food in the best way for my baby to be able to eat it? My rule of thumb is that if you can put the food in your mouth and break it apart with your tongue and the roof of your mouth, then that's about right. So this is for vegetables that need cooking, like, I don't know, sweet potato, carrot, all those kind of veg. It saves time and also a lot of mess. If you can cut the foods up before you cook them, that way, once they're cooked, you can just leave them to cool and then give them straight to baby. 
as your baby develops, they will start to be able to handle more tricky shapes and sizes of food. This progression is an estimate, so don't panic if your baby isn't following everything to the T. They will catch up eventually. So when your baby starts weaning at six months, they start out with what's called the palmer grasp. So they tend to grab food with the main bulk of their hand and direct it towards their face. It's not pretty, but it's fairly effective. So when you're feeding your baby around this time, you need to make sure that you're giving them foods that they can use their palm and kind of the the bulk of their fingers to grab hold of. So finger sized foods, baby muffins, chunks of food that aren't too small uh, so that they can just shove it in their face. <laughs> and then from around eight months, they get better at involving their fingers at picking up things. So they are capable of taking on um, more sticky food like sticky rice or uh, Weetabix or potato mash. So you can start introducing that into their diet a little bit more. Then from nine months, you'll notice that they're starting to use their fingers a lot more carefully and develop what's called the pincer grasp. So they should be able to take on more delicate foods like peas and halved grapes, blueberries, raisins. Um, you'll also notice that they start to obsess a little bit over crumbs and dropped bits of food. So in theory, it should make them a little bit tidier when they're eating, but um, I wouldn't bank on it. You'll be surprised at how quickly your little one can learn to use a spoon. You can give them a spoon from six months if you're comfortable to do that. All you need to do is load it up for them and either put it in front of them or hand it over to them. Um, they can learn pretty quickly. A lot of it will go on their face, a lot of it will go on the table and some of it may even go on you but eventually they'll work out how to do it. You just have to be a little bit patient with the mess in the meantime. The other thing is the fork. Now you might need to wait a little bit longer for the fork just because they need to have a little bit more dexterity and grip. Um, so around eight to nine months, you might find that they are able to spear things with the fork. The only thing to think about is that you give them foods that are spearable. You don't want it to be a difficult process for them, otherwise they'll just get frustrated and we want weaning to be fun. Most parents worry about the balance of nutrients as they start weaning their baby. One of the most important nutrients to be considerate of is iron. Babies are born with enough iron stores to last them until they're around six months old. After this point, they rely on their diet to make sure they get enough iron in their body. Some research was carried out between pureed fed babies versus solid food fed babies. And what this research found was that the solid food fed babies were less likely to have the right amount of iron in their diet and therefore their stores of iron were lower than those in the pureed fed group. This makes sense when you think how easy it is to spoon feed iron rich fortified cereals and things like pureed meat. If you are giving a mainly solid food diet to your little one, one thing to consider is making sure that they get enough iron. Here is a list of iron rich foods that you can include in your baby's diet. Wholemeal bread, Eggs, you can make frittatas because eggs are a great source of iron. You could even add finely chopped spinach to omelette fingers to give them an extra boost. Meatballs, baked beans, broccoli, tinned tuna, porridge and lentils. We all know how important a healthy, balanced diet is, but not everybody has time to sit and crunch numbers and weigh ingredients before they make food for their baby. So as a rule of thumb, just make sure that you're including a good range of whole grain carbohydrates, fruit and vegetables, calcium, protein, good fats in their diet. Make sure there's a good iron source in there somewhere as well, and you can't go wrong. So when you're ready to feed, all you need to do is put a couple of pieces of food straight in front of them, either on the tray or on a plate, however you want to feed it, doesn't matter. And then you just sit back and watch the show. How much you help 
by picking food up for them or turning it around so it's facing the right way for them to eat or put it in their hand is, is up to you really. But just make sure that you don't put food directly in their mouth because that presents a choking risk. Weaning should be a really fun experience. It's all about creating a positive relationship with food. So if you have the time um, and the inclination, feel free to make the food look as exciting as you like. There are some great examples on social media of food presented to babies and here are some wonderful examples. In addition, it's important that you allow your baby to use all the exploration tools available to them. So please let them just sit and squish and, and mess around with their food and wipe it all over their face and spit it out. It's very messy, but it is teaching them not only how to use their mouth, how to get food into their mouth and what food feels like inside their mouth, but it's also teaching them that eating should be an enjoyable experience. As your baby goes through their weaning journey, you'll notice that they're getting better and more confident at eating foods. Once you've established that they're not allergic to anything, you can start to mix foods together and they can start to get platefuls that look a little bit more like what you have on your own plate. This is when family meals become so much more inclusive for your baby. This is also when you can claim a little bit of time back that you used to spend preparing separate meals for your little one. And in some households, that time is really valuable. This weaning series has been about my experience as a mum. Therefore, it definitely doesn't include all the weaning scenarios and challenges that can present themselves. For this reason, in future videos, I will be inviting other mums and weaning professionals in to talk about their experiences of weaning, advice they have to give, and also support. This will include suggestions for food progression, as well as weaning challenges such as picky eaters. Thank you so much for watching this video and the other videos in the weaning series. I hope they've been useful. If you would like to see more content from me, please hit the subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you on Life with Layla again very soon. Bye.